In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, momentum and uh, possibly also impulse. If not, we'll just do that in the next. But uh, momentum is something that's uh, very important in physics. And I'm just going to uh, give you a quick equation and show you what it is that we use. So first of all, uh, momentum is actually given by uh, this letter P. And we write it in uh, the units are kilogram meters per second. Okay, that's what we use. Now the actual equation for it, uh, that's actually very important as well. This is in your data booklet. And this goes P equals MV. That's how I knew the units for it. So I didn't memorize the units. I just know the equation P equals MV. M is mass. So that's going to be um, measured in kilograms. Uh, we should probably actually put vector symbols on them because P here, momentum, is actually a vector. So we're going to have mass in kilograms. We're going to have um, V is the speed, or actually velocity, which is going to be in meters per second. And we're also going to have, obviously, P, which is the momentum. in kilogram meters per second. It's just good practice to write it down. That way we see it over and over again. So this equation right here, very, very important for us. This comes out a lot. Uh, this helps us in a lot of situations, uh, especially if there's a collision. So if two things run into each other, then you can actually figure out what's going to happen. The key thing here is momentum is conserved. So that means basically that the total um, momentum before equals total momentum after. So this right here is really important. This is actually what I almost always end up using is that the total momentum of a, of, a, of a system beforehand is equal to the total momentum after. And this is actually what's useful with uh, momentum conservation. Here we're actually looking at linear momentum because we're actually not considering things in a circle. Uh, we call that uh, yes, you know, rotational or angular momentum. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to give an example. So let's say um, a skier. Uh, let's see here. So skier with uh, so mass of a skier is going to be doesn't really matter. Let's see, uh, 55 kilograms. Okay, so a skier uh, runs into a snowboarder. This is a common occurrence, at least. Uh, so skiers say, I like to ski and snowboard, so I don't really mind, but. Um, a uh, skier runs into a snowboarder, and here we have to have the mass of a snowboard, so I'm going to say MSB. Uh, that's going to be someone more massive, so maybe 70 kilograms. Maybe that'll work. Um, so here we go. And the question is going to be, um, well, they stick together. That's going to be the key thing here. The two are actually going to, so one is skiing along and runs into the other person. They're going to sort of stick together. In that case, it's probably just a tangle of arms and legs, an angry skier and snowboarder as they uh, careen down the hill. Uh, so we need to have a uh, speed of the skier. So let's say that the skier is going, uh, let's say 20 meters per second east. And let's say that the speed of the snowboarder, or the velocity of the snowboarder, I should say velocity here, uh, let's say that person's going 30 meters per second west. So the question is, uh, how fast will they go after they run into each other? So what is their velocity? after the collision. 
So what's their velocity after? So what I like to do in a situation like this, where we have um, two things running into each other, is first of all maybe try to uh, understand the situation here. And what I like to do is actually put a big line across what I'm doing and consider that sort of before and after. Okay, so before we have this certain situation and after we have another situation. And the key thing is that we're going to have to find the momentum, the total momentum uh, before, and we're going to set that equal to the total momentum after because of this. This is the only thing that's sort of allowed to cross this line of before versus after. So with my skier here, so I've got uh, this person here on their skis. Let's see here. Well, they've got their skis here, and they've got their velocity of, what was it, Thir uh, 20, 20 meters per second going that way. And we've got the snowboarder then, so they're on a snowboard, and they're going with a speed of 30. So what really helps is if you actually break it up into, um, normally you'd look at the components. So if this was in 2D, you'd say, uh, you know, the X component and the Y component. But this is a simple 1D problem where we're just going left or right. There's no up or down. In other words, there's no north or south. So in this case, then, we can just find the momentum of the skier. Okay, so PS, so momentum of skier, is just going to be, um, well, the mass of the skier times the speed of the skier. So in this case, it's going to be 55 times 20. So that's going to be uh, 1,100 kilogram meters per second. And keep in mind, this is going to be east. It's important to keep track of uh, which one is facing which direction. Uh, then we have the momentum of the snowboarder, so PSB. And that's going to be similar here. It's going to be the mass of the snowboarder, which is 70 kilograms, so 70, times the speed of the, or sorry, the velocity of the snowboarder, which is 30. Right, so then we're going to have, uh, well, that's going to be 2100 kilogram meters per second west. See, what we have now is we have uh, uh, the momentum of the skier and the momentum of the snowboarder. And that's the, that's the momentum of each of them. Now what we need to do then is figure out what's the total momentum of the system. So in other words, P before. And it's just adding up these two. But remember, they're in opposite directions. So in this case, I can say 2100 minus 1100. So that's just going to be, whoops, minus 1100 is going to just equal 1,000 kilogram meters per second, and it's going to be west, because that's the one that wins, so to speak. Right? The snowboarder is more massive and going faster, so that one's going to win. The good news is now we can bring that, that total momentum before, is going to be the same thing as the total momentum after. Now afterwards, these two people have stuck together. So now we have sort of an angry mess of snowboarder and skier. And they're both, I don't know, uh, they're stuck together and they're really angry with each other. So maybe there's like a ski that's stuck this way and another ski that's there, we have a snowboard. They're not very happy and they're moving off somewhere. We know actually that they're gonna move off towards the west. So at least we know that, that they're gonna be off in that direction to the left. But the question is, what happens? How do I find the momentum after? Well, afterwards, it's a nice easy situation because both of them are together. There's only one object. So that means then that, uh, well, momentum is just mass times vo uh, velocity. So in this case, the mass of them, it's gonna be, well, mass of the skier plus mass of the snowboarder, because they're stuck together, times their final velocity. I should put a vector there. I should actually put vectors everywhere here for the uh, momentums. So if we look at this then, now we can actually solve for the velocity of both of them. It's just going to be P after, divide that by mass of snowboarder plus mass of skier. 
Well, in this case, I already know p after. p after is 1,000. Right, so then I have 1,000 divided by, and I have uh, 55 plus 70. Keep in mind, that's going to be all west. Well, I'm going to need my calculator for that. And um, so what I'm going to do right now is just um, divide 1,000 by 55 plus 70. And if I do that, I end up with 8. So what this means then, I'm just going to put down my calculator, is that uh, they're going to move off with a speed of uh, roughly um, 8 meters per second. Now, this is going to have a direction. The direction is going to be west. So the good news is we can use conservation of momentum to solve all sorts of crazy looking problems, right? We can have one person running into another one. And as long as we uh, keep track of the total momentum before and the total momentum after, then we can actually solve just about anything. This could have been in 2D or 3D or all sorts of crazy situations. It wouldn't matter. The key thing here is that we know the total momentum before is the same as the total momentum after. We say that is momentum conservation.